Andrew. Um, how do you, you know how the socialists are always touting leisure time under socialism is better than leisure time under capitalism and capitalist kind of capitalism runs you ragged. How do you think of, and leisure time is an important value, but how do you think of it in the context of socialism versus capitalism? Well, I think of it that in socialism, there's no leisure time. In socialism, you're running just to survive. They, they take, for example, in Venezuela right now, nobody has leisure time in Venezuela. Or um, in, um, uh, in any real socialist country, North Korea, nobody has leisure time. In Cuba, people don't have much leisure time. So what they want is they say... Our version of a mixed economy that we're going to call socialist, even though it's not, and all the wealth in that economy is produced through private property, we're going to call it socialist in spite of that. We're going to evade all that. Our version of mixed economy emphasizes leisure time. Your version of the mixed economy emphasizes wealth creation. Both are mixed economies. And yeah, I, I can see people, um, uh, people think that that is... Uh, the trade-off that they're making, it might even be a trade-off that when you ask people in a particular country if that's the trade-off they're making, they say, yeah, that's fine. I prefer my leisure time. I don't want to work in August. I want, a whole, I want a vacation every August. Um, but the reality of it is, that's when you ask them. But the reality of it is that, and, and I wish I could run the experiment. And the problem with advocating philosophy of capitalism when you, is you can't run the experiment. If you had open borders today between the United States and Europe, what, what do you think the flow would happen? Would Americans be flowing towards working in Europe and living in Europe, or would Europeans be flowing to America? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that the flow would be almost uh, uniformly from Europe to America, which suggests to me that when the rubber hits the road and they actually have to choose between leisure time and wealth they choose wealth they choose to go and and it's not just wealth it's opportunity it's more freedom it's 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 everything that's wrapped up with it um but i can't run the experiments i can't prove it to people but if anybody thinks that there would be that that i, I believe that sweden's population would be reduced by 25 plus percent if they we opened up the borders with the united states right even though life in Sweden is pretty good. And in COVID, Sweden was much better than the US. Um, but so I think it's a myth, but I can see where it comes from. And and maybe all the people in the United States who want a welfare state and lots of leisure time would move to Sweden. And good riddance. That would be fantastic. This is one of the great advantages of open immigration is you get people choosing the kind of life and world they want to live in. They, they're not just stuck in a place of their birth. So you get all the socialists going to socialism and all the capitalists coming to capitalism. Um, but yeah, so that's how I think about it. Both are mixed economies. Um, if you actually had a free economy, uh, I think, oh, it, well, let me, let, me, let me say this. This is important. The very concept of leisure time, I've talked about this, the very concept of vacation, the very concept of going out to a restaurant, the very concept of a hotel and going on vacation are capitalist concepts. Yeah. They didn't exist in the pre-capitalist era. So to the extent that now Europeans are choosing vacation, longer vacations, it's only possible because of the amount of wealth the capitalist portion of their economy creates that makes it possible for them to take longer vacations because they make so much money during the 11 months that they can take a month off. But that's because of whatever elements of capitalism exist in their economy. So it's only capitalism that makes it possible for any of this to exist. Do you think there'd be a five-day work week under laissez-faire capitalism? Um, yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, there is a five day work week because of that. That is, I think that ultimately it, it was it was something that labor and capitalists negotiated and it made sense. And, it, you know, laws were passed, but the laws, it, the laws just codified what was already happening. I could see it being, though, tied much more to productivity. 
than like a specific mm-hmm. amount of time per person. No, I don't, I, know. I don't know. I think that people, particularly if you're working in a factory job, I, I think you need to recuperate. And I think there's a sort of mentally, physically, maybe if it's a hard labor, if it's a like a blue collar job and, and you need a couple of days off in order to do that. Um, but I think we are moving towards a world in which uh, y- 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 there is the potential for a three-day work week. There's a potential of do these tasks and you're done. You can do them in however long it takes and we'll pay you per task. Th- th- there's a lot of optionality going on. You can see it right now with the work from home or work from home two mm-hmm. days, three days a week or come in on these days. No, you, you know, and 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 the, the, uh, the future of capitalism is a lot more flexibility in how we work ex- and and a personalization of it that is, some people will want to work five days. Some people will want to work seven days. Some people will want to work two days. And you'll be able to personalize it to yourself and 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 adapt to whatever type of lifestyle you want. That is, that's what capitalism would make available, would make real if we had capitalism. Thank you.